everyone. It's Mark Thurman with the Connected Things Conference. As you'll recall from the other uh, segments that we've been recording, this is a conference all about 5G. It's an IoT conference all about 5G. We've had a number of very interesting keynotes and fireside chats. And this is, I think, the fire fi final fireside chat of our conference. And it's, I think, one of the more interesting ones. I'm here at Boston Dynamics in Waltham, Mass. I'm here with Skip Snyder and, and Mike Pollitt. And we're gonna talk a little bit about a connected thing that actually roves around. We're gonna talk about robotics and, and the role that robotics has in the IoT and the 5G ecosystem. But first of all, let me have these guys reintroduce themselves. Skip? I'm Skip Snyder and I am a senior partner with IBM and I lead uh, what we call Intelligent Connected Operations. Happy to be here. Glad to have you. And this would be an, uh, uh, an Intelligent Connected Object if I've ever, if I've ever seen Absolutely. one. Absolutely. And our host here is? Absolutely. Uh, Mike Pollitt, Chief so uh, Sales Officer for Boston Dynamics. Glad to be here today. Thanks for having us. So we've prepared kind of a few topics to talk about, but I think we're going to focus a little, little bit on what is Spot, who is Spot, and what are, what are Spot's other friends and family. So why don't we start there? Who is Spot? Sure. Um, <coughs> Boston Dynamics has been around for over 28 years, developing the world's most advanced robots. We have several robots. Uh, one that was released earlier this year is Stretch. It's a warehouse logistics robot. Uh, but the core focus around our commercial offering currently in the industrial world is Spot. It's a quadruped, basically a four-legged robot. Uh, and it's the world's most mobile and agile robot. Uh, it was developed to go where people go. So it can go up and down stairs, across rough terrain, walk over boulders, walk up and down sand hills, in water, not swimming, but crossing you know, mud puddles, stuff like that. So imagine any industrial setting, where, whether it's in a mine or an oil rig or a power plant, we have developed a spot to traverse those uh, terrains. Now we've seen a lot of videos lately um, coming from here. So you've done, a, a, I think, an excellent job promotionally talking about the robotics use case and demonstrating the agility of these robots. How does that play out in terms of the agility with spot? You know, talk a little bit more about what, what Spot can do. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I imagine when you see the videos, you're probably thinking, did they do 50 takes to get that? <laughs> That's not the case. Uh, and we'll see a little bit later. We'll have you drive Spot. Oh, God. And <laughs> you tell it to go up the stairs, and it goes up the stairs. Wow. You tell it to go across a, a bed of rocks, which Skip has done. It goes across a bed of rocks. Uh, it has, uh, what I like to say, people say, does it have AI? Well, it does have AI, but it's athletic intelligence. So it understands the momentum and okay. the agility and the Different movement. kind of AI. Uh, mm -hmm. Along with, with um, obstacle avoidance. So we have built Spot to actually use in industrial settings. In fact, when we had Skip up the first time, he was driving Spot. And he tried to <laughs> run it into me while we were in the lab. Just joking. I hear, I hear there's a bet around that. Exactly. Too. But <laughs> the obstacle avoidance guided Spot around me and continued on its path. Because in the real world, when you're at a plant, there might be a pallet that is in the way that wasn't there yesterday, or it could be a group of engineers or technicians. Spot is designed so that it recognizes the path it's trying to traverse, and any obstacles that get in its way, it navigates around those and continues on its path. Okay, and you know, Skip's here from IBM. Um, what's IBM's role in all this? Where, where, where does IBM fit in? So um, Mike and I uh, have known each other for a couple of decades. We've been in the um, asset optimization, asset reliability arena for, for over 20 years. And uh, he gave me a call, let me know that he had started working here at Boston Dynamics. And we started talking about some of the capabilities that we have uh, at IBM, um, specifically artificial intelligence, visual analytics, uh, acoustic analytics. And what we realized was that the combination of uh, what Mike and, and Boston Dynamic have in Spot, combined with our capabilities around advanced analytics, AI, and um, uh, acoustic, um, put it into an edge device on the back of the robot, it, it kind of felt like a match made in heaven. And I'll give you an example. So Spot, if Split IBM aside for a minute. So you take Boston Dynamics and you have Spot go out. You have somebody who has to drive it. 
or you can do an auto mission. And you know, the, the um, camera is on spot, look up at a, a gauge. Let's just say it's a pressure gauge on a piece of equipment. Well, the person driving it or reviewing the videos later can record those readings. What we've done is we've added capability. Now imagine spot going out and doing a mission looking up at that gauge because of our video analytics, recognizing that's a pressure gauge, because we've actually inputted inf information about this asset, knowing that a normal range for that is 140 to 150 pounds, taking that a step further, let's say it reads it and says, that's 157 pounds. Okay, we need to do something about that. And we actually provide the insight. What do we need to do? Well, Spot's a cobot, works with people doing some repetitive tasks in the example that I'm giving you. Now imagine it creates a work order in like a uh, ERP or a EAM system like Maxinol, right. alerting somebody that the pressure on this particular asset is 157 PSI, which I know is out of range. I need to get somebody out here. And we could, we could do a work order. We could actually have Spot call somebody and say, hey, you need to get down here. Um, you know, some of the things that we're looking at in the future is even going so far as to calling another Spot robot and going through the hey, have a look at this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. This is yeah. this is out of range, and this is the mission I need to do. These are the switches I need to throw and turn something off. So um, that's what IBM brings to the table. And you know, when, when I'm talking with clients, they're asking the questions the same way that you're asking them. They, they say, "Well, what, what is Boston Dynamics? Yeah, I get what he does. But what do you do? What do you do? Right. And then yeah. when I when they start recognizing, well, IBM has the you know leading AI capability, leading advanced analytics. We have, you know, the ability, we have data scientists, et cetera, that can actually pull and put all this stuff together. And on top of that, I've got asset management experts, right? So that combination together, um, just it's one and one uh, equals three every time. So this is a, a walking sensor mm -hmm. or, or base for sensor base sensors. sensors. Yep. Um, the IBM piece is the integration piece, the software piece, the intelligence, Together, you know, you, you actually, that, you know, yeah, the, so the combination really solves the problem. And it's, take it a step further, because as an SI, think about, you know, uh, bringing this into in, into a company. There's going to be change management associated with it. We're, we're infusing, you know, changes into workflows, making it, uh, intelligent workflows, bringing a level of cognition to um, uh, to what we're what the clients are doing around their processes. So IBM also has those capabilities. In addition, but you know, I don't want it to just be about the technology. In addition, to that we have the services capability to actually roll this out. How do you roll out a fleet of spot robots? Right? You know, we're talking about one in a lot of the proof of concepts. But as these proof of concepts mature, I'm envisioning 15, 20 spot robots on a site. How do you manage that? And those are the capabilities, uh, additional capabilities that IBM brings. To no, look, it, make, it, it makes it makes a ton of sense. So. If I'm in the boardroom and I'm a CIO or an enterprise decision maker, at what point am I bringing the combination of the two companies in? Do I have a problem that I need to solve? You know, is my stuff leaking? Is my, you know, uh, post COVID, am I still afraid to bring workers back into the factory? When does the call come that I need me a spot? I think it's when they realize the value of the combined solutions. Uh, if you look at the, the equipment that's now being manufactured, rolls off the assembly line today, it has the sensor capability of one of my past companies. We developed hardware, it had the sensor capability. We could get over a 90% uh, accuracy with failure detection and failure projection because it had all that sensor capability. Unfortunately, if we look at all of our asset intensive industries globally, the average age of equipment is 25 years old, wow. average age. And with all the advancements that our customers and our asset management systems are making, that 25 years is going to turn into 30 or 35, which is great. We're extending the life. Right. But that also means we have to deal with, I would say, probably 90% of the assets our customers have don't have sensor capabilities. And that is going to be the case for probably three or four more decades. So I think we, yeah, I'm going to interject. So yeah. that's actually an issue. So you go into a factory. You, there's old equipment. Yep. So you actually, rather than retooling the entire factory, now you've got this rolling bank of sensors on spot or some of your other exact uh, cobots and robots exactly. that can actually come in and pulse through some of the new sensor and the new AI capabilities that IBM has. Absolutely. Okay. And, and our customers do rounds and readings. Almost every asset intensive company today does rounds and readings, but it's a manually intensive, 
they might have a mobile device or a three ring binder or a clipboard. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to help our customers utilize their employees in a more on more important aspects, not doing Higher rounds of reviews. Right. Yeah. yeah. High value add. Yeah. Don't have them doing rounds of reviews. That's where Spot can come in. And rather than doing it once a week or once a month, Spot can wake up on a periodic basis, automatically executes. It can do it every two hours, every four hours. Right. So 724, 365, Absolutely. no vacation pay. Exactly. <laughs> and, and to add on to, to Skip's point, if it sees that 157 PSI on the gauge, with the other payloads on board, not only does it say it's 157, but with like a touchless vibrometer, it can say, what does my vibration image look like? Right. And then do a thermal image of the bearing house. Say it's a feed water pump. Mm -hmm. Or the bearing house, and do a thermal image to see if the bearing housings are reaching a, a critical temperature. Right. Uh, or any other reading. So when somebody's assessing that 157 pounds, they don't have one piece of data. Yeah, they might have five or six or seven pieces of data on the current operating statistics or, or metrics of that piece of equipment. So, and, and this may be a future, I don't know, but is spot autonomous in that it can act on an alarm state on its own? Or will it at this point only uh, only uh, revolve around having a human say, yeah, go fix that? And Well, it's somewhat in between. Uh, you can either drive and operate it which is uh, some of our nuclear operators move into radiated environments right. and they're actually operating. So it can be your remote inspection. Say I have a hydro facility that's unmanned. I get a call at eight o'clock at night. There's an anomaly at the, the plant. I can log onto my browser. I can wake spot up on the other side of the world, walk over and look at the asset. So we can do that. Uh, Skip also mentioned the auto locks. So you can record a mission to say, walk the compressed air system right. and you you basically operate it one time and it walks along and records and you say inspect this asset i want to do thermal and i want to do read a gauge i go to the next inspection point i want to do vibration and do another cd or com computer vision model mm -hmm. and, and continue on once you've recorded that mission then you can have it start in maximum automatically and just say oh it's 2 a.m start this mission Okay. Go run that. So, so the Maximo software from IBM is what's it's effectively, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give myself a vintage. That's AAA triptych. So it's it's laying out the route, if you will. No Maximo. No, no not Maximo. No, so we would, we would, we would pre-record the mission. Okay. Well, where Maximo comes into play, and it's really an EEA system. We can right. do this yeah. with any EAM system. Um, we create like a uh, preventive maintenance work order. Got it. And it's all we're doing is changing the status inside of Maximo to say, go run this, go, go right. do this PM. Maximo right. then communicates with Spot and says, run that auto mission. And then Spot will get up. Then Spot does mission. that. If, yep. all, if all's clear, it logs it, no yep. problem. If there's an issue, here's the issue. If it's, a, if it's an alarm. So my question is, how does it raise up the alarm? And does it automatically, again, close the valve? Uh, or not it? yet. But that's a we have developed and released an arm uh, that we are working with a number of customers on, and eventually we do want to not only monitor the world but also do manipulation, throw a, a electrical breaker, close the valve, adjust the setting. All right. Uh, but today, when it finds that anomaly, anomaly, it can generate a work order, like in Maximo or some other. And it reports that back to the human operator, and then the you know I see an alarm, it's been reported back. I'm going to affect the change. Exactly. Whatever that is. Exactly. And we truly look at this as a cobot, right? right. We're, not, we're not looking to replace people's jobs. We're looking to take mundane tasks, or or even a better example would be a, a dangerous task, right? right? So, uh, uh, for example, sending spot into a nuclear containment area. You can't do that with a human. You'd have to shut the the, the, uh, the nuclear reactor down in order to get a, right. a human in there. But if you actually had a spot positioned inside that nuclear containment unit, you can actually have it running inspections Right. ahead of any shutdown or anything along those lines. And what our clients are telling us is that could actually save millions of dollars. Right. Not and, thousands. And it'll never come out once it's been exposed. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about some of the sensors. We were kind of hinting at it. So spot, you know, moving, walking thing. What are the sensors that can be put on it either by, you know, category or, you know, ones that you want to talk about? Um, Camera, really, I know really just about any sensor out there can be adapted and fitted on the spot. Uh, we obviously have uh, cameras, we have uh, microphones, yeah, microphones or acoustic imaging. 
We have touchless vibrometers that can be applied. We have gas detectors. Um, even um, you know some testing on CBR, uh, CBER, you know chemical, right. biological, nuclear sensors, radiation detectors. Yep. Um, let me see. Obviously, thermal cameras. I think that's that's the ones we've been working mostly on. But just about any hand um, sensor you have. We can adapt and add it on the back. So the, the payloads are, you can use anybody's payload. Is there like, is it a standardized payload? That they have to develop the, the mounting and we have to okay. make sure it's um, protected in case there is a fall because these things are operating in, in industrial settings. Uh, right. So you'll see like around the thermal camera, there's a little guard around it. So if it does fall, the payload is not damaged. Okay. And in terms of how it connects, it's a, conference all about connected things. How do these things connect today and how do you see that progressing out? Well, it, uh, and I'll touch on the uh, turn over skip. It can collect data and then come back and when it goes back to its docking station where it repowers itself. So it'll batch and set it There's a batch. Out. Okay. Uh, optimally though, it's either running on the customer's Wi-Fi or something like a 5G network. So it has real time, high volume capacity. So it's, it's more of a real time uh, sensor to enable industry mm -hmm. 4.0 capabilities. So you want to yeah, talk about I think, I think it hit up anything from a 5G perspective. You know, I, I think as we, we start doing more production rollouts, it won't be a single spot that's communicating on a right. Wi Fi. You start adding, you know, 10 spots. 15 spots that's quickly going to overpower, uh, you know, a, a, a Wi Fi network. 5G, I think, will probably uh, uh, take be the thing that's going to take care of that. Um, in addition, I think 5G opens up additional use cases, right? Well, yeah. And, and, you know, we, the other, I did a thing the other day with um, American Tower where they're talking about CBRS and private networks, private 5G, private LTE. And that's sort of the antidote for factories that are looking to you know, quickly reconfigure. So you have uh, you know automotive companies where they change the line and right. you have to you know reconfigure a line takes a lot of time on you know on a good day or a good right. week. But right. you know having to change the plumbing around for it is a perfect use case for for private networks. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I would imagine that you'll have uh, clients within the private network space, especially Industry 4.0. In the EU, Industry 4.0 has really taken off of private networks. So are, are you seeing those things, those trends right now? There's, we're seeing a lot of interest. Um, and it's, um, I think it will be a rapid adoption once we get some more validation. And you know, cost is always an issue. Right. So it's balancing the cost. But the value prop is certainly there. And with our combined solution, we're probably the, the one that's pushing the limit of the the connectivity that's needed uh, yeah. initially, but going forward, there's going to be more sensors and there's going to be more demand on having that. Which, which requires more bandwidth and lower latency, Absolutely. which is the private 5G use case. Exactly. And our research facility is currently using Spot with a with a 5G network, so we're doing some testing of our own as well. So yeah. there'll be more to kind of talk about, you know, exactly. as this kind of progresses down. Exactly. Um, what other devices does Spot like to work with? So you're in a factory environment. I know it. You know I understand the use case. I understand that it patrols around. Mm -hmm. If that's what the uh, the settings are supposed to be with, do you uh, work with other devices? Are there other are there other devices in your ecosystem? Are you planning an ecosystem? Uh, we have a uh, a partner ecosystem with other payloads. Okay. Um, we have three D scanning capabilities uh, and a payload with one of our partners, Trimble, to do construction sites. Uh, which is proving very valuable for the construction industry because it's that again is a manually intensive effort to have humans walk around and do a 3D modeling or mapping of a construction site so that maybe the general contractor that is on the other side of the country, the other side of the world, can look at the progress, how many columns are in, how much sheetrock is up. And they might only do that two or three or four times during an entire construction life cycle. With spot in that capability, they can do that on a continual basis uh, to track the progress and monitor the progress of construction. But we have a full ecosystem of, of payloads that are, are adapted or, or built to run on spot. So, you know, this is uh, going out to the uh, MIT Connected Things, the MIT uh, Enterprise Forum community. Um, a lot of folks are, are building products that perhaps we haven't, we're not aware of. What thing are you seeking? What would you want? What would make 
What's the next thing that Spot should have stapled to the top? Um, the thing that Skip and I have talked about. Yeah, because this is an opportunity. You've exactly. got people that can go build yeah. stuff. <laughs> Skip and I have talked about the need to have a single payload that has the touchless vibrometer, the thermal, acoustic, uh, the edge compute device. And the LiDAR camera. And the LiDAR camera is one payload. Because right now we'll okay. have like a pan tilt zoom camera with 30x optical and thermal that's one payload we might have the acoustic payload is another payload we want to be able to gather all that data simultaneously so we, we really the utopia would be having one payload that has um uh, can capture all those metrics yeah got that everybody there's an opportunity here with big it's a challenge. <laughs> it's a challenge. It's a challenge. Yeah, um, yeah maybe we can uh, maybe we can get a little competition going of some sort and yeah. and uh, uh, try and get some folks to develop some things. So um, we're going to kind of maybe draw to a close in a few seconds because I know we're going to do um, do some interesting um, demos and all that. Um, the primary industries where you see Spot playing, could you just outline those again? Um, Initially, there's a lot of focus around construction, uh, but really all asset intensive industries kind of overarching, but we're focusing in utilities, manufacturing. Uh, we see a lot of viability in the mining industry. Oh, uh, mining would be perfect. That makes perfect sense. Exactly. Oil so so that's, and, and let's, talk, let's talk about the mining use case just very briefly. Sure. So uh, what is Spot's role? Is it, is it again, uh, you know, uh, verifying that things are are still in good order is, it, I mean, it's not you know hauling the uh, ore out of the uh, no. ore out of the ground. No. Uh, there is one aspect that is asset management, especially in the processing plants, because those are asset intensive facilities. Right. Also, before you do a blast, rather than sending someone a person down, you send Spot to do a visual inspection or all the blasting caps or all the the wires connected correctly. And then after a blast, sending Spot down. I thought you could send Skippin' for that. <laughs> well, we tried. He wouldn't go. <laughs> I bought a Spot robot and said, use that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, un, un, uh, exploded ordnance that might be down there or gases that might have been released. Right. So we can go down and do a, uh, an inspection post-blast before people go into the mine. Yeah, getting into that whole worker safety aspect right. of it as well. Yeah. Now, are there any use cases that you guys typically avoid that are not good for spot? Well, going back to the foundation of Boston Dynamics and Ethics, we don't allow spot to be armed or used in any way to survey people, uh, intimidate or harm. So you'll never see a spot that has a weapon on it or it's used to as surveillance or any of that. That's just... Uh, that's, uh, that's that's off the uh, that's table stakes. Okay. For I think games. the other ones that I would probably bring up is remember it's an industrial robot, right? So having spot rooms, the floor of a, a hospital, it's not really a use case that we're right. we're, we're focused on anyway. Yeah, no, I think it makes sense. Actually, before I wrap up uh, this segment, I I didn't want to kind of leave out the MIT connection uh, for Boston Dynamics. If you wouldn't mind, just kind of filling in you know, filling that in for the rest of the audience. Sure. Uh, actually, we were started uh, by Mark Raver. Uh, and then right after that was Rob Plater. So Mark Raver is our chairman and Rob Plater is our CEO, both MIT. Uh, both did their uh, PhD studies around robotics. Okay. Uh, they were the, I guess, the, the founding fathers of Boston Dynamics. And uh, I'm not sure how many MIT PhDs we have on board here exactly, but it's a large percentage of our staff here. Um, and uh, probably the, the top roboticist in the world, the brightest uh, crew that we have here. And uh, came out of the CSAIL lab? I am not certain. That's where I think I a lot of the robotic uh, stuff was, but not very good. So we, I think we'll, um, we'll go off to the next segment. I, you know, obviously, you watching at home won't see the uh, the seamless cut that we're about to make, but I really appreciate it. Do you, do you have any kind of closing comments or remarks you want to make? No, just th thanks for the opportunity. No, no thank you. you. And uh, I'm and just excited about the partnership with IBM. I think the combined solution, to your point around Industry 4.0, 
the key there is sensors, and you know, we're bringing the sensors to the assets. I think it's going to be a game changer for our customers. Well, I'll end it with uh, the way I end all my, my conferences and my videos. The possibilities are endless. Well, they actually are. This is, so really, this is really cool stuff. So uh, the rest of my audience knows that we're trying to, uh, well, we know we're going to be back on campus right after Labor Day uh, for live events. So uh, we'd love to invite you to our uh, we haven't planned the exact date, but um, we'd love to invite you to come uh, present at our conference live. Sure. I think uh, since Scott Spot can move, maybe we can take we'd Spot on the road. You know, sure. about twelve miles. So Absolutely. thanks a lot.